Hello and welcome to The Dungeon. I'm your host Rob. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a character build for The Darkness from Top Cow and Image Comics. Uh, this was a viewer request and I really like this request. I read The Darkness a bunch when it first came out but I didn't really stay with it unfortunately. I also read a bunch of Witchblade as well which was the same author. Um, but for those of you who haven't read it or maybe aren't familiar with it, The Darkness is a comic book about this like extra dimensional force of chaos and destruction simply called the darkness and it's existed since the dawn of time and it is opposed directly by this other force called the angelus which is the force of creation and light and order but not necessarily good the angelus is kind of like a burn the world down because it's full of sinners type so not really good just you know light and creation uh the story of the darkness takes place where a young man named Jackie Estacado, who is a hitman for the mob, uh, gains the powers of the darkness, which are inherited, we'll talk about that in a second, and uh, finds himself attacked by servants of the Angelus. Uh, but as he gets more and more experience with his power and grows like more and more powerful as he starts to master his abilities, he actually manages to kill a couple of the different Angelus hosts. <laughs> um, and probably becomes the most powerful wielder of the darkness that had ever existed to that point in time. Uh, he's really the only like main wielder of the darkness that we see in the comics as well. It's pretty much all about him. So for this build, there's two different ways you could go. I kind of one was to try to make Jackie Estacado as the darkness. The other one was to try to make like the darkness, regardless of the host, and try to stay more stay more close to like the themes of the darkness, and that was kind of more what I went for. I still incorporated a lot of Jackie's personality and traits, but I wanted more of, um, imagine that your character in D&D was the darkness, essentially, rather than making Jackie Estacado as your character, I guess was how I was trying to look at it. So as far as his main powers, the darkness can tap into this extra dimensional um, source, I guess, of energy, and just summon like darkness. You can summon these things called darklings that are like these little demon imp creatures. Although their size can vary actually. But they're all incredibly strong. Even if they're like a foot tall, they could like rip your arm off and stuff. Yeah, they're pretty mean and foul mouthed little buggers. Um, so he can summon the darklings. That's one of his main abilities. He also has this armor that's like a manifestation of each wielder of the darkness' own personality. But the armor always gives them like superhuman strength, speed, durability, those kind of things. It also uh, gives them like a healing factor so they can regenerate from wounds more quickly than normal people could. And limited shape-shifting powers where they could like create like blades on their hands or wings on their backs, stuff like that. Um, they can also manipulate darkness, of course. They can teleport. They seem to have a lot of like extra sensory perceptions and can see even like things that other people are just simply unaware of, like even into other realms and stuff occasionally. They can reanimate the dead. Uh, nice ability for D&D. However, the darkness also has some very glaring weaknesses, one of which is direct sunlight, which renders him almost completely powerless. His powers are greatly diminished in light. In fact, even just like bright light, not even the sun, but if he's indoors and everything's well lit up, it can really hamper his abilities. To the point where like some of his enemies have even used things like flash grenades against him like you know because they knew that it would like dispel the darkness temporarily um of course he's also used things like smoke grenades to uh obscure the light for himself so i think that kind of thing is interesting there's also a weapon called the sun dagger which can basically just kill him instantly so uh that's not great and of course his greatest weakness sex if he ever impregnates a woman he will die instantly the moment the child is born. In fact, that's how he became the darkness, because like I said, it is inherited. Uh, and then that child will manifest the darkness powers when they turn 21. Um, so yeah, you know, for a good looking hitman guy with tons of money who's into bad girls, uh, that, was, that was a problem for him, let's just say. Um, anyways, as far as the actual character itself, we don't really have anything that reproduces the like strong and darkness and weak and daylight type ability, except for races that have disadvantage in direct sunlight, such as drow elves. 
So I think you could make the character human if you wanted to be most true to the comic, but I decided I'd go Droelf, or at least mention Droelf, just to kind of get that feeling of the darkness. More, not necessarily about the race, but more just the idea that he's hampered by the light. And yeah, you draw off still gonna be a lot more capable in direct sunlight than the darkness is. You don't lose all your powers, you just have a disadvantage. But I like the fact that it was kind of in that same type of, you know, territory, right? Uh, I decided to go just straight Warlock. Originally, I wanted to see if I could work in some like Shadow Soul Sorcerer because I've done a lot of Warlock stuff, but I've done less Sorcerer and I really wanted to try that. But the truth is, the Warlock just fits so much better. They have way more and way better summoning spells. Uh, I decided to go with the Fathomless Warlock, which gives us the tentacle because he's constantly like summoning tendrils of darkness. And I just think that that's uh, one of his more iconic abilities. And I think you could still multi-class in a bit of Sorcerer if you wanted, but I think Warlock's just a way better fit for the character himself. I also think that um, since Jackie himself is a hitman for the mob, I think things like Rogue and Fighter make a lot of sense. He's a pretty decent fighter, right? Something that Warlocks usually aren't unless you're going like Pack the Blade. Uh, I think that those are all viable options, but really I just decided in the end I'd go straight Warlock and I would take the criminal background to kind of recreate the Rogue type feeling of the character. That's still going to give us the deception skill is going to give us stealth. It's going to give us proficiency on thieves tools. Um, you know, not saying that rogue would be bad either, but I just thought that we just stick with uh, straight up warlock all the way through. Uh, Dro, I should have mentioned as well, will give us some spells. Dancing light, which doesn't really seem to fit the theme at all. Uh, fairy fire, though, which is maybe less so, but still a great spell, so I'm going to take it anyways if I can get it and Darkness at level 5, which is perfect for this type of character. Uh, especially because it doesn't use one of our spell slots, and because our spell slots all scale automatically as Warlocks, Darkness is great at level 2, oh, as a second level spell, I mean, as a level 3 character, but it's not so great when you're using a fifth level spell slot for it. So having a different way of getting Darkness onto the battlefield is kind of nice, in my opinion. Uh, Joel also gives us proficiency with the hand crossbow. So if your campaign doesn't have firearms and you still wanted the feeling of Jackie uh, firing at people with his gun, which he uses a lot, by the way, hand crossbow is a decent substitute. But since I'm more interested in getting the feel, not necessarily a direct representation of the comic book, I just want the feel of it more, I think that Eldritch Blast will cover that attack quite nicely. It still has that like darkness type of attack it seems very thematic for the character. I think it works. Anyways, so Warlock level one. Oh, I'm not gonna go through all the spell choices right now. I will go through spell choices later on, because I, you know, if I go through every single level, that's gonna take forever, but I'm just gonna go through all the spell levels at the same time, and I'll just list my favorite choices for each, and you can kind of pick and choose from the list which ones you like, or, you know, pick your own if you don't like some of my choices, which is fine, by the way. This is all just my opinion, you know, so. Um, I'm going to list invocations though, and when I usually took them, but again, I'm going to have a list of other invocations at the end, which I think will fit the character, some of which I just didn't think were quite as good as other choices or whatever, because I still want the character to be really good too. So even though I'm trying to fit the comic book, I'm also trying to like make a good character, right? So anyways, level one, we're going to get our tentacle, which is awesome. I mentioned this in our recent video on the Fathomless Warlock. I won't go into a lot of detail again. We also get the Gift of the Sea, which gives us underwater breathing and a swim speed, which is fine. Uh, I should have mentioned the dark, the darkness armor also allows them to like breathe underwater and stuff. So, you know, that's a nice representation of that. Um, at level two, we get our first invocations. We get two of them. I took Agonizing Blast, but I'm probably gonna replace that briefly as we level up more. Um, I think Agonizing Blast is awesome but I really wanted to get some of the packed invocations worked in. And when we hit level five, we've really we've only got three invocations by then. And so I kind of dropped this one out and took in one of the others and then we'll add it back in. Uh, the other invocation I took was Devil Sight because whether we went with a Drow Elf or a human, either way, I want to be able to see in Magical Darkness. That's one of that character's iconic abilities. So, you know, I want to have that. Uh, level three, we get our packed and I chose the Pact of the Chain. 
And mostly because then we can get our cool like imp or quasit or whatever uh, are familiar that we can summon. And I thought this would be a really good way to represent some of the dark ones, right? Because he talks with them a lot. They have weird conversations sometimes. Um, and, you know, it gives us a lot, a lot of nice scouting tools. Uh, in the case of the, well, actually they all do. In the case of the Imp, we've got the Poison Stinger, which isn't bad. It has some low-level spells. It can fly. It's got some decent stuff. In fact, they all do. But the Imp has the most hit points. Quasit with seven hit points, a little behind the ten. Uh, the others are even weaker. So even though I think they have some really nice abilities, uh, they tend to die from pretty much anything. <laughs> but either way, I think all four make really good choices. So, you know, pick the one you like the best. At level four, we get our first ability score increase. Oh, I should have mentioned, if we go variant human, we do get to start with a feat. And uh, I should mention, I think Warcaster, Alert, and Lucky are probably our three strongest choices. But we do get an invocation which duplicates the advantage on concentration saving throws that Warcaster would have given us. And because invocations are a lot more common than feat choices, um, I might just take that instead, but it depends. If I want Variant Human, I don't think that starting with Warcaster is bad at all. I might want Alert though. I also think that one I usually don't talk about, but which I think serves really well on a Warlock, is Spell Sniper because we tend to just attack with Eldritch Blast a lot, which requires an attack roll, and it benefits from, from a Spell Sniper, because now we don't have to worry about partial cover, and it doubles the range on the spell itself, and it already had pretty good range. Plus, we can also take an Invocation, which will further double its range. So if we took all that, we would have a 600-foot range on our Eldritch Blast, which is insane. Anyways, so, uh, you know, all strong choices to start with. Anyways, I decided at level four, though, I'd probably just take my charisma. We'll try to max our charisma as soon as possible. Then we'll start going into feats. At level five, we get our next invocation choice. I decided to take Voice of the Chain Master, which gives us telepathy with our familiar, and Investment of the Chain Master, which is the one that gives our pet the scaling of our spell safety C instead of his. Ours is usually a lot better. And it lets him attack as a bonus action, we can command him, instead of him using one of our attacks, which is a lot more costly usually, you know? So now, he can just attack with a bonus action for us. That's pretty decent too. It just makes our pet a lot more useful. And this is where I'm dropping Agonizing Blast, is probably for one of those abilities. Although I don't think you have to. If you want to just mostly stick with Agonizing Blast, I think that's a very solid choice. And you can pick up whichever one of these you didn't take at level 7, which is when I'm going to just retake Agonizing Blast anyways. So, level 6, we get Oceanic Soul. This gives us Resist Cold and Telepathy if we're submerged underwater with anything else that's also submerged underwater. We talked about that last time. It's okay. It could be useful sometimes, I'm sure. Resist Cold, though, is very good, so not knocking that part of the combo. We also get the Guardian Coil. Again, very nice. Just getting that tentacle to get even more useful than it was before. Level 7, we get another Invocation. Like I said, I'm probably picking up Agonizing Blast if I dropped it. If I didn't, I'm taking either the uh, Investment of the Chain Master or the Voice of the Chain Master, whichever one I hadn't taken earlier. Level 8, we get another Ability Score Increase or a Feat Choice. I'm probably just going to max my Charisma at this point. Level 9, we get another Invocation. Uh, I decided... For mine, I was just going to take Mask of Many Faces, which lets us cast the sky self. But there's a big list of ones I'm going to go over at the end of the video, and I think you can take any one of those ones. I just like this one, but I don't think it's by any means the strongest or best or only choice. Again, this is all just my opinion. Do what you want. <laughs> just use this as a guideline and then make your own decisions. At level 10, we get the uh, Grasping Tentacles, which is basically our improved version of Evard's Black Tentacle spell. Very thematic for the darkness especially, like I said, we summon tentacles, they attack and grab people and whatnot. Very nice. Um, perfect ability to fit the theme of this character. Level 11, we get our first Mystic Arcanum. We'll go into the different choices when we go over spells. Just be aware that our Mystic Arcanums have gotten slightly better. Because now, whenever we get a feat choice, 
we can trade out one of our Mystic Arcanums for a different one if we change your mind. Before, we didn't have the option of trading at all. However, be aware that you're already level 11, so your only feat choices are going to be at 12, 16, and 19. So, that only gives you three chances to trade one out if it just isn't working for you. So, you know, be aware. Anyways, level 12, we got the next ability score increase or feat. Feel free to take one of the feats that I've already mentioned. All of them are pretty good choices. We also get another invocation. I decided to take Gift of the Ever Living Ones or Trickster, Trickster's Escape. Uh, Trickster's Escape gives us some nice mobility. Uh, Gift of the Ever Living Ones makes healing better and easier. So, you know, if, as long as our pets within range of us, we get better heals. Pretty decent ability. Level 13, we get our next Mystic Arcanum. Uh, level 14, we get Fathomless Plunge. This is our teleport that, you know, takes us to a body of water that we've previously seen, along with the party members. Yeah, you know, it's no hurl through hell, but what do you do? <laughs> uh, level 15, we get our next invocation. And here I took Chains of Carceri, uh, which is just an excellent, excellent ability. Honestly, it's one of those ones where you think like, eh, it's kind of limited to what it can hit. It's like a whole monster, but it only works on like certain types of creatures. It's kind of limited. But then when you realize that, oh wait, this is at will and it doesn't use a spell slot, this is ridiculously good. Uh, you know, your opinion starts to change very rapidly once you've actually tried using this. We also get another next Mystic Arcanum. Level 16, we get another ability score increase or a feat. You know, do what you will at that point. Level 17, we get another Mystic Arcanum. Finally get our ninth level spells. At level 18, we get absolutely nothing. <laughs> at level 19, we get our last ability score increase or feat choice. And at level 20, we get our capstone, Eldritch Master, which is, eh, it's okay. <laughs> um, if you did want to multi-class into something else for the last three levels, I completely understand. <laughs> Because there's not a lot there. Not that Eldritch Master is terrible by by any means, but if you have time to use Eldritch Master, you probably had time to take a short rest anyways, my usual thoughts. So, I don't think it's great. However, enough of that. Let's move on to the spells. So, for our cantrips, uh, obviously I took Eldritch Blast. I think this is almost required on any Warlock, even if you barely... Like, even if you're playing a Pact of the Blade Warlock, and you mostly just want to run up and smack guys with your Magic Sword... Just having a really nice ranged damage option is still so useful. And especially in a character like this, where we're mostly going to be playing like a battlefield controller with ranged damaging spells, this is just absolutely perfect. So, you know, Eldritch Blast, number one choice. But I also thought Mage Hand was kind of an interesting choice. Um, not really summoning the darkness to move it, but I kind of like the feeling that you could, you know, have your tentacles move stuff for you. Uh, I think Infestation is an interesting choice, mostly a thematic one more than anything else. Minor Illusion, of course, is pretty good. Mind Sliver has a very nice rider. I don't really like the damage on it that much. Elder Splash is just a way better damaging option. But if you really want a teammate to succeed on a spell, Mind Sliver is not a terrible choice. Uh, for our first little spells, I took Armor of Agathis. I usually prefer this on like more melee-focused Warlocks. But it's still not bad, just giving you more temporary hit points. You know, it can be pretty decent sometimes. I took protection from good and evil, mostly for the theme of it, because, you know, he's constantly fighting, like, angel creatures from the Angelus, right? So, uh, you know, I thought that protection from evil and good would be a good choice there. I took Unseen Servant, again, because we're kind of going a summoner route. Um... We're not going to be able to ritually cast, though, so I don't know that this is really a strong choice. I put a question mark next to it. I also think that things like Hex are still a solid choice. And, you know, Hellish Rebuke, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's not terrible. Um, again, I think it's one that works better on a more melee-focused character where you're planning on getting hit. But, you know, it's there. It's on your list. If you want it, you can take it. You could also take Thunder Wave, which is on your Fathomless Warlock spell list. Not a bad first level AoE spell. But again, some of these I'd be looking to trade out when we level up anyways. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, level 2 spells. Darkness. 
even if I have this as a draw elf, I'm probably still taking it just because it's darkness and on the darkness. <laughs> uh, I also took Hold Person though. Invisibility and Misty Step are all really solid options as well. Again though, some of these I'm probably gonna be looking to trade out. Because, you know, our spell slots are automatically leveling and these aren't necessarily going up with us. At level three, uh, level three is just a plethora of great spells. There's always so many great choices and there's never enough uh, spell slots for them. Obviously we have things like counter spell and dispel magic. Uh, animate dead, I specifically mentioned that he has the power to reanimate the dead. Summon shadow spawn. Again, very thematic for the character. We're summoning creatures out of darkness. And Shadow Spawn are one of the best summoning creatures we got from Tasha's, in my opinion. I actually like them better than some of the higher level ones. So, um, you know, we only got a couple at level three on that list, but I think Sh Shadow Spawn is awesome. Uh, we also get options like Fear, good spell. Hypnotic Pattern, not necessarily thematic to the darkness, but just a great spell anyway, always worth mentioning. Hunger of Hadar, basically just darkness that damages people, excellent choice. Um, I also put down Summon Lesser Demons if you really want to have like more summoning creatures, but I think this choice is so inferior to Summon Shadow Spawn that I probably wouldn't bother. Uh, but I just put it on the list just for the sake of completeness. Level four, Dimension Door, like I said, you can't teleport. Shadow of Moil. Um, this is a really nice spell, but again, more of a melee focused spell, I think. But it is one that has some nice utility, even for you. So, it's definitely worth considering. Uh, summon Greater Demon. Pretty decent summoning spell, and it, you know, it will scale to your level fives and you can get more powerful demons. I also put Summon Aberration on the list. I actually think Summon Aberration is probably worse than just Summon Shadow Spawn out of that fourth level or fifth level spell slot. But the Beholder Kin thing, or whatever the option is there, isn't too bad. So it's at least worth mentioning that if you wanted the option, that, you know, having a different option is never a bad thing, right? Uh, level five, I like Far Step quite a bit. Uh, basically, it's just a bonus action to teleport within like, I think it's 60 feet or 90 feet, whatever it is, I should have looked it up, I forget. But either way, um, this, you know, requires concentration, but you can just keep teleporting every round as a bonus action. Not bad at all. Bold Monster, good spell, of course. Infernal Calling, if you want more summons. They'll be aware that most of these other ones are usable in combat, and this one is not. So even though Infernal Calling is quite powerful, um, it's one that's gonna require some setup time in advance. And I don't know that you really need it as much because now you have a lot of other summoning spells from Tashes that I think do a really good job. Uh, we also have Simnapric Static. If you want some AOE damage, pretty good spell. Again, not one that really fits the theme as much, but it's just a really good spell and always worth mentioning. And then also Dance Macabre, uh, allowing us to animate a bunch more of like more powerful undead. And uh, that does fit some of his powers and is very, very good spell. So level six, and now we're getting into our Mystic Arcanum. So we have one of these, you can only cast it once per long rest, unlike your other spells. Like I said, you can only trade it out when you get an ability score increase. So uh, choose carefully. <laughs> but the ones I wrote down were Summon Fiend, not a bad choice, again, more summonings. True Seeing, I think that, like I already mentioned that he has extrasensory perceptions, and I think that this is a nice way to represent that. If you feel like you've got summoning is already covered, you don't really need more, I think this is a really good substitute. And then lastly, I took Eye Bite, just because it's a pretty good spell. I probably put it behind the other two, but definitely worth mentioning, it's a good spell. Level seven, uh, obviously my number one pick. You probably already know what it is if you're familiar with any of my videos. Force Cage, if Force Cage is on your list, take Force Cage, it's just that simple. But in case you didn't want Force Cage, or maybe you're like, I always take Force Cage on all my other characters, what can I do different? Uh, Crown of Stars is kind of interesting. Plane Shift, pretty good spell as well. Um, nothing that was like really, really standing out to me though, other than Force Cage. <laughs> At level eight, uh, 
We get Demiplane, potentially. Very handy spell. I also like the idea of him being able to like create his own little pocket dimension. But uh, the one I decided to go with as my number one choice was Maddening Darkness. It's darkness, but it does damage. So, uh, you know, pretty good choice, pretty good choice. Level nine, we have not a lot of choices. Wish is not on our spell list and we're a genie and we're not genie warlock. But Foresight, um, he does have some sort of like precognitive abilities sometimes as well. So I thought Foresight, A, Foresight's probably your best spell level nine anyway for a warlock. Pretty hard to go wrong with that. But B, it does fit the character as well. But I also took True Polymorph because he does show some shape changing abilities from time to time. Not to the extent that True Polymorph usually is, but you know, if you wanted True Polymorph. But True Polymorph is also a great spell, so no, no complaints about that. Uh, and lastly, I put Black, uh, the Blade of Disaster. I, I almost called it Black Blade of Disaster, but that's what it used to be, I think, in second edition. Um, the Blade of Disaster is a pretty nice spell as well. Does pretty good damage. Crits on an 18, 19, or 20, in which case it does triple damage instead of double damage. Bonus action to cast and use not interfering with your main stuff. It is pretty good. However, Foresight giving you advantage on all your attacks and, and saving throws and disadvantage to get hit. Last eight hours, no concentration. Probably gonna be my first pick still. Anyways, as for invocations. Um, I wrote down Armor of Shadows because you can create your armor. Uh, this would've been like a automatic first pick for me if I didn't already have access to light armor and probably have a decent dexterity. I don't know, especially if I went Dark Elf, then I'm getting plus two to my dex, plus one to my charisma. I don't know that armor of shadows is really worth the invocation if it's only going to be like a, a one armor improvement. But I do like the idea of being able to do the armor and that's kind of re reminiscent of the dark of the darkness's uh, own armor that he creates. But, you know, whatever. Uh, one with shadows gives us some visibility. Problem is, it's not very good in visibility because it ends if we move. So we can't even use it to like sneak into places really. But it is called one with shadows. I mean, that is, you know, it sounds like it should be good for us, but I decided to put it on the consideration list because I think some of the other ones are just better. Uh, Sculptor of Flesh. That gives us Polymorph. You have to be level 7 or higher to take it. But Polymorph is an excellent spell, so adding that is never a bad thing. At uh, level 15, we can take Witch Sight, which again will give us a bunch of extra sensory perception. Um, I don't know that I'd take it above uh, Chains of Carceri, though, that's, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, you do have some high level options, so that's one of them. Not bad. And then the other things I wrote down were mostly just ways to make our Elders Blast even better. Because if we're going to be Elders Blasting a lot, you might want more than just Agonizing Blast. So I added Repelling Blast and Grasp of Vidar, giving us some combat utility where we can push or pull targets. That can be very nice sometimes, especially in combination with things like a Maddening Darkness or a, you know Hunger of Hadar, right? You cast Hunger of Hadar on your enemy, they move out, you then repelling blast them back into the hunger of Hadar, and now they take damage from your repelling blast, and they take damage from being inside the, the hunger again. I should also mention for um oh sorry, and Elder Spear doubling the, the range on our uh, on our Elder's Blast spell. We already mentioned that one earlier, and then Lance of Lethargy, which I mentioned in our Fathomless Warlock video, which gives a slowing effect to our Elder's Blast. And combined with our tentacle slowing guys, we can like really slow their movement down to a crawl or even to zero if they have like 30 movement or less. So I do think there's some really nice utility from those type of abilities as well. Uh, it's not always about the damage sometimes. Sometimes I'd rather just have a lot of other effects I can do. So those were my million thoughts on it. Um, I did want to mention though, specifically the darkness devil sight combo. This is one that gets abused a lot. I personally tend not to use it, but I think that it's just so thematic for this character that I really would be doing a disservice if we didn't at least talk about it. And I think one of the reasons I haven't had 
um, positive results with it is because a lot of my party members get really angry if you cast it on targets that they wanted to be able to hit because now they can't see those targets either. But you can cast it on yourself and then just attack from inside your own sphere of darkness. And because you have devil sight, you can see out, so you're not at a disadvantage. And rules as written, because they can't see you, you still have advantage on your attacks. They don't have to be blinded by your darkness. They just have to not be able to see the source of where the attacks are coming from. So rules as written, you could move away from your party, cast darkness in the area that you're in. Nobody else is being hurt by it, right? And now anybody trying to attack you has disadvantage. They can't target you for actual spells and you can still fire out with your Eldritch Blast as is perfectly fine. So I did want to at least mention that. And I think that in general, Devil Sight just gets a lot of utility on this type of character because I took, you know, if we have darkness, let's say either as a racial uh, spell or as one of our own spells, Hunger of Hadar, it's not magical darkness, but it is darkness. But, you know, um, again, more, more dark type effects, maddening darkness, of course, just all these type of abilities. I kind of like the theme and idea of, you know, it not hindering us. So I think the devil sight is very iconic to this type of character. And it was one that I really, really wanted to have. Um, if I was going to multi-class, like I said, I think that fighter offers us some good, some good choice, allowing us to, you know, maybe get extra attack. We could potentially go with Pact of the Blade even. I personally went with a chain because I liked the idea of just having my like Darkling Imp type of things around. And summoning a familiar was the best way to represent that really. Especially because he's just there all the time, unlike some of the other summon minions which come or go, right? So I, I just thought that, that was a better fit. But, you know, in the comics, uh, Jackie's a pretty decent fighter. And if you wanted to represent that, I think fighter is a pretty good choice, right? Especially if you wanted to take like the archery fighting style, maybe use like, a, or, a, or gunnery if, if, if your campaign allows such things, right? There's even a, a feat for, in Tasha's, you know, for gun, which is basically just the same as crossbow mastery, but for pistols. And I think that, you know, those kind of feats can help to give you the more martial feel of the character, if that's the route you decide to go with. Which I also think is perfectly fine, like I said. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I just like the feeling of a straight-up warlock on this guy. Um, and I like the idea of getting the high-level spells. I like Maddening Darkness. I like things like Foresight. And, you know, those are all really, really solid picks. So, I didn't really want to add too many levels of something else. Especially because, if you really wanted to recreate the character as closely as possible, you'd probably have to start Rogue or start Fighter. And then go Warlock, which is just not really how I wanted to build this character at all. Um, so, you know. But I do think the criminal background can at least uh, replicate some of that. So, you know, whatever. And I wanted to focus more on the darkness itself rather than focusing on, on Jackie, like I said. But uh, anyways, those are my thoughts on, on the darkness. Uh, I might actually try to do a, a build for the Witchblade at some point as well. Uh, I think that might be kind of interesting. But in general, I kind of like the idea of trying to do more character builds. I think this kind of stuff is fun, trying to figure out like, how would I play this character or that character or whatever, you know? That could be neat stuff. Even if you don't want to play that character exactly, you just want to get some ideas and inspiration and play something that's kind of inspired by it but not trying to recreate the character, I think that this kind of stuff is a lot of fun. So anyways, thank you once again, Vagan, for the request. I think that uh, this was a fun video. Hopefully other people liked it as well. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and most importantly, leave me your comments. How would you have built the darkness? What kind of changes would you make? What kind of spells or invocation choices would you make? Uh, would you go Warlock at all? Maybe you'd go with somebody else, which I think is also a viable choice. Or maybe you'd go Warlock Paladin instead of Warlock Fighter. That could be interesting. Um, probably a better choice for the Angela, so. <laughs> uh, but either way, uh, that's everything I have. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.